Welcome to Math Mini Lessons. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to expand fractions to create equivalent fractions. Let's look at the first example. We're going to express the figure as a fraction in expanded form. So again, remember the first thing I want to do is accurately represent the model. And so in this model, I see four shaded parts out of 10. So I know I have four, 10. So the first part, done. Uh, now to expand this as a number sentence, I want my numerator to have a one on top. So I'm going to expand this. How many one temps? So that's really what they're asking me. How many one temps do I have here? And I can see it. I know I have one tenth and another one tenth, another one tenth. I know I have four sets of one tenth. So this is what I know. I know I have four sets of one tenth. So to expand that, four tenths is equal to one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth. Hit pause and jot this down into your notes. Here's our second model. We're going to expand the fraction to write three expressions that are equivalent to two and three fourths. And just something to note here, two and three fourths is a mixed number. So again, I don't have a model, so I'm not worried about representing the first criteria for success, uh, but we do want to expand this. So one way I can expand is to just separate my whole number from my fraction. So this is one expansion, it's gotten wider. Another way I can express this is to now take that three fourths and expand it out with one as a numerator. So I have one fourth, now I have two fourths, and now I have three fourths. I'm just counting in my head at three sets of one fourth. So those are two expressions that are equivalent. So how else can I expand this? My, I can't expand this part anymore, but I can definitely expand this too. So I can even separate this to one plus one. And then here is our fraction. So each of these is equivalent to two and three fourths. Now, I do want to say that more than likely on a state exam when they want you to expand, they will probably mean either this one or this one. But all three of these are equivalent ways of expressing the value two and three fourths. So jot this down into your notes as well. Let's look at our last example. The shaded part of the model represents a fraction of the whole. So I can just see it here. I know this whole piece, if I went all the way around all 12 pieces, I would have one. So 12 out of 12 is one. And I'm gonna write two fractions that are equivalent to the value represented by the shaded part. The first way, honestly, do not make this more complicated than it needs to be. <laughs> what does the model show? And the model is very easily a shaded part out of all the parts. And I have eight shaded parts out of 12. So that's one easy way. We do not have to complicate this by making it harder than it needs to be. And then my second one can just be my expanded. And in my expanded form, I know I have eight sets of 1 12th, okay? Because I know that there are 12 pieces here, 12 parts. So each of these is 1 12th. And if you need to write this into your, into your drawings, into your notes to make it clearer for yourself, that's fine. And, and now I can expand this into 1 12th plus 1 12th, plus 2 12th, 3 12th, 4 12th, 5 12th, 6 12th, 7 12th, 8 12th. Right? And I know I'm just checking my work because all my denominators are the same. They're all the same size, 12. I can leave the 12 here. They're, they're just remaining a 12. And I'm just adding the pieces. I have eight pieces out of 12. So let's jot this down into your notes. 
And that's it for today, Math Marvel. This is everything we've talked about. Notice I've showed how I can just represent the model as a fraction, very simply. And I can expand this as a number sentence by talking about each individual part. And each individual part usually has a one as a numerator. That's the simplest way to do this. And of course, as you saw, I can have an exp I can have a mixed number and I can just separate my whole numbers and my fractions and come up with all kinds of equivalent fractions. But it is great to just check your work to make sure you don't make small mistakes. And a very simple mistake would just be, for example, if I only wrote maybe seven of these instead of eight. So just by counting and just double checking our work, we can make sure we don't make those silly mistakes. That's it for today's lesson. I will see you in the next one. Be well. Thank you.